Yeah, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Patrick, Kumal and Bill for inviting us tonight and organizing this uh, fabulous event. So hopefully you'll all find it interesting and stimulating. So Leslie and I are sharing our presentation and so I'll start off by giving a, a general overview um, of Janaya and our vision of what we want to do with stem cells and then Leslie will give you a more specific update on the uh, research project that's funded by the foundation. Okay, Janaya, and I put it on the title Helping People with FSHD and um, I, we could extend that to generally helping people with genetic diseases but FSHD is one of our focus areas. So if you haven't heard of us before, Janaya, we were formerly known as uh, Sydney IVF and we really have four business units. The largest is the, the clinical IVF uh, business. We have a holistic business, which is complementary medicine, um, bioplatforms, which is a technology business around reproductive uh, medicine, and um, what's the topic of tonight is Genea stem cells. And we really pride ourselves in being world leaders in fertility treatments. Um, we have in the 20 uh, plus year history of the, of the company a good track record of R&D. Uh, a lot of clinical products, incubators, catheters, and uh, more recently stem cells as well. And we're also running the world's largest and diverse PGD program. And PGD stands for pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. So it's uh, patients with a, uh, a history of a genetic disease in the family. And so the, uh, the premise here is that we want to enable those families to have healthy babies. And we do that by uh, growing IVF uh, embryos in, in vitro in the laboratory. And as you can see in the picture, uh, it's possible under the microscope to take a few cells out of that embryo. And that's enough to test the genetic makeup. So we can tell before uh, the embryos are transferred back to the mother um, which ones are, are, are normal and which ones carry the disease. And the alternative um, for patients would be otherwise um, to do prenatal testing, so amniocentesis for example, and then make the decision whether they want to continue the pregnancy or not. And there's been multiple studies done that this second option isn't really um, viable, it's extremely traumatic for patients. So PGD really takes away that, that fear and the stress that is associated with it. And uh, I also want to mention our PGD assistance program. And PGD is currently not subsidized by Medicare in Australia, so it does cost a little bit more money. And we realize that not everyone can afford that treatment. And the PGD assistance program is really designed to, have, um, to give families or couples with on lower incomes the chance to, to have access to that treatment. And then what is also unique to us at Janaya is that patients can then uh, decide if they wish to do so to donate their disease-affected embryos to research and stem cell derivation. And that's really where Janaya stem cells comes in. And that's more supporting research and, and drug development for FSHD and other diseases. And I thought I'd start with our, with our mission statement. I simplified a bit so that I don't confuse you right from the start. So we supply and develop products for use in medical research to facilitate the advancement of treatment options, options for people suffering from genetic diseases. So this is what we set out to do. And our products are disease-specific uh, pluripotent and differentiated human stem cells. So that sounds very complicated and I'll explain to you what that means. Um, so it starts with a donated human embryo and those embryos may carry diseases if they come from the PGD program. And we can then turn those embryos in the laboratory into uh, pluripotent embryonic stem cells. And those stem cells, they're really interesting because they can form every cell in the human body. So as the embryo develops uh, in the uterus, it happens naturally, but we can also um, mimic or replicate some of those processes in the laboratory in vitro. And pluripotent, the term pluripotent, that what it, that's what it means. So that means that the cell can can form every cell type in the human body. And so the process of turning stem cells into adult cells, that's called differentiation. And if you, uh, for most genetic diseases, if you think about it, there's nothing wrong with a stem cell. And so they are all similar and, and normal as such. So if you want to study diseases such as FSHD, what you really want to look at is the muscle cells in that case. Or if it's Huntington's disease, you want to look at brain cells. 
So it's very important um, for the use of those cells to, be, to maximize the benefit to be able to generate the cell type that is affected by the disease, which is muscle in, in our case here. And we call those differentiated cells then a disease model. And, and those cells then also show in the dish some aspects um, of the disease. Often uh, you may come across the term disease in a dish. And so that's what we are effectively creating. So now briefly to the second part of our mission statement, the advancement of treatment options. And I just want to give you as an introduction a very brief and simplified overview of how drugs are generally developed. So it all starts off with a chemical compound library and that um, uh, can be tens of thousands of molecules which may have some pharmacological effect. And the chemists are very good at making those, but then it's like finding a needle in the haystack. So we really have to find a way to figure out which of those molecules may have an effect uh, for treating a disease. So we need some ways or means to, to measure an effect. And so once we have that, we use a process called high throughput screening and that's really testing all those, uh, those thousands of compounds to see whether they have an effect. And so once you're at that stage, you usually get some hits, so you get some effect, they need to be more refined, optimized, characterized, and then uh, you have to check that they are safe and then they go into clinical development. So the whole process on average takes about uh, 10 years and it's usually expensive, take, uh, costs um, uh, over a billion dollars to do that. And so the disease models that, that we are developing really come, come into effect into those boxes which I showed here in blue. So at the early stages, really trying to find the needle in the haystack, that's what we're trying to do. And then there's, there's two fundamentally different strategies. So you can, you can see with cells, so we make FSHD affected muscle cells. They, they may look slightly different from normal cells, so their morphology may be altered. And so when we're trying to find the needle in the haystack, we may just actually look for compounds which may reverse the morphology, so it make, look, make our cells look normal again. And so we don't really have to understand exactly how the disease works to do that. And the second approach is the opposite, so that's where you try to figure out first exactly how the disease works, what genes are involved, how can you uh, modulate those, and you take that particular gene or gene product and try to, to, f to find drugs uh, which actually act on, on that particular product. So it's a different philosophy behind it. So now when I say, oh, it's all good and well and interesting, but so what? And I hope to share with you uh, that it's um, quite exciting, I think, our approach and what we're doing. And two points I want to make is that stem cells uh, promise great models of diseases with many advantages over other approaches. And the phenotypic drug screening approach, so just looking at what the cells look like essentially, is statistically the most, has the, the highest chance of success in the industry. And if you look at uh, disease models in general, so stem cells, have really unique properties and, and um, have many advantages. So first of all, at least in, in our company, they're all human cells. And mice and other animals, they're not humans. They have different genetics, different metabolisms. Now we say if we could cure mice as well as men, then no one would be sick. So it's, it doesn't always translate directly. And if you want to identify or, or investigate tens of thousands of compounds, you really have to be able to produce enough cells and to scale it. So again, with animals, for example, yeah, you may be able to test a few hundred, but you can't do tens of thousands. Or patient biopsy material, it's very good study material, but you will never get enough material um, to really produce hundreds of millions of cells that you would need for high throughput screening. So stem cells really address a lot of those, of those problems here. And what I mentioned before, I got that from a uh, recent review article from, from last year. And in, in this study, the authors looked at strategies that were used to uh, develop successful drugs on the market over a period of, uh, of nine years, from 99 to 2008. And I just point out this column here, and that's really the phenotypic approach that our stem cells facilitate. And it's the single most successful approach for drugs um, in that period. And um, so that's really something that we can do by giving the pharmaceutical and biotechnology industry the tools um, to do the drug screening and really make an advancement here. So I just want to sum up my part. So we really try to 
help people with FSHD and other genetic diseases through our PGD program and the stem cell program as well. And one aspect that I haven't mentioned yet is also that we want to make sure that our stem cells are used as widely as possible. So we make an effort to distribute cells to academic researchers around the world who want to, to, use, uh, to work on FSHD and use our stem cells as a research tool as well. And then um, we work with biotechnology pharma companies to really advance the, uh, their drug development. So that's uh, my part, and I hand over to Leslie.